Writing a will is one of the key things you can do to make sure that what you want to happen after you die actually does happen. But it can be expensive, and that puts some people off, understandably. But today, I want to talk about why it could be money well spent. Hi, and welcome back to another 5 Minute Friday. Great to have you with me. So I want to talk about why you should never ever do a DIY will, in my not so humble opinion. So let's put five minutes on the clock down here, say a quick thank you to my friends at Seven Investment Management down here for continuing to sponsor the show, and let's crack on. First thing we need to understand is that legalese is there for a reason. Have you ever actually read a will that's been written by a solicitor? They're full of all kinds of strange phrases like residuary estate and held upon trust for and stuff like that. And it's easy for people to dismiss this as legalese, a sort of fancy language which is only there to help solicitors charge more for their work. But actually, this seemingly complex language serves a purpose. What this language does is it removes all doubt about what your intentions are for the will. It does that by calling on centuries of precedent, wills that have been written like that, which have been tested in law in some way, and the definitions of those words have held up. So in using those words, you know that they will work. Essentially, if you say this, it actually means this, and it can't really be questioned. And that's good, because you're no longer around to ask what you actually meant when you said X, Y, Z. So clarity in the language is super important. Now, it's theoretically possible for you to just grab a piece of paper, write down your instructions, and as long as it's signed by two adult witnesses and dated correctly, then it could technically be a valid will. But you are almost certainly not going to use the right terms and phrases that have been tested over all this time in law. Now, DIY kits that you can get from Smiths or whatever, they will have standard paragraphs, and some of those will use the right terminology. But it might even be the case that the order in which those clauses are laid down in your will are important. And if you're DIYing it, then there's nobody to ask. And so we need to ask ourselves, what price peace of mind so that we know that what we've written actually will bear out in practice. So legalese is there for a reason. The second reason I think you should never do a DIY will is that every single person and hence every single estate is going to be different. In preparing for this I went onto the gov.uk website and they have a page about when it might or might not make sense to do a DIY will. Spoiler alert, generally the sense on that page is that it doesn't make sense to do that. But the page gives a bunch of circumstances where it definitely makes makes sense to have a professional solicitor write your will for you. And the last of these circumstances that it gives where it makes sense to use a solicitor is that if there are any aspects of your will that might be misunderstood, or if your affairs are even slightly complex. That to me sounds like pretty much every estate. <laughs> There's always going to be something which might potentially be misunderstood or misconstrued, and very few people have extremely simple estates and affairs. Most people think that their affairs are going to be dead easy. Ooh, little slip of the tongue there, dead easy. Did you catch that? Good job I make myself laugh, isn't it? <laughs> so they'll come in here and say, well, I'm leaving everything to my spouse or partner, and then if he or she dies before me, I'm going to leave it to the kids. So far, so simple. But then they go, oh, well, actually, there is that thing that I've promised to my great niece, or my grandmother left me some shares in XYZ company, and she made me promise to leave them to somebody else. Very few people have extremely simple, rock solid, straight down the line, affairs after they die. Usually there is some element of complication. And these days families are complex. You know, the nuclear family is largely a thing of the past. Very often we've got second hand families, stepchildren, step grandchildren, nephews and nieces, all that sort of stuff. And it all needs to be clarified absolutely so that there's no doubt. A professional solicitor, of course, can help you navigate all that sort of stuff and write the will in such a way that your wishes are properly expressed. Last reason why I think you shouldn't DIY a will is that by doing so, what you're doing essentially is pushing the risk down the road. Yeah, you can save money now by writing your own will, either literally writing it yourself or using a DIY kit, but you're potentially storing up problems for those who have to sort out your estate after you've gone. Your will could be deemed completely invalid if it isn't correctly worded or if it isn't signed and witnessed correctly. If you do it yourself, there's nobody to check and so you can't ever be 100% certain that all is well. Yeah, any will is better than none, but if your will is invalid because of a mistake that you've made, then you might as well have none and how much better 
better would it be to sort it out now and know that it's done right? So if you haven't got the message yet, I generally think DIY wills are a bad idea. Just the last word on will writers versus solicitors. Will writers provide a useful middle ground between your sort of DIY will writing kits and your full-fledged solicitor service. They're almost always cheaper than a solicitor, but they're generally less comprehensively trained. If you use a will writer, and by all means consider that, do make sure that you use one who has an accreditation from a recognized body, like the Society of Will Writers. My gut feeling though is that will writers are best reserved for people with simple enough wills, you know, fairly straightforward stuff. If you're engaging in any inheritance tax planning, if you're using trusts and stuff like that through your will, definitely get that done by a full-fledged solicitor. The law surrounding all that stuff is incredibly complex, and again, the last thing you wanna do is to get it wrong. 20 years of doing my job, I've seen some horrendous wills, wills which would have made life extremely complex for those left behind after the testator had died. A well-written will, apart from being a thing of beauty, a bit of professional nerdism coming out there, actually is a massive help to the family at a time when, let's face it, they're gonna be pretty upset and emotional about losing you. So, DIY wills, generally a bad idea. Use a will writer if it's simple, a solicitor if it's not, and go fill your boots, and then just get on with life, you know? We put off this stuff because it's no fun thinking about what happens after we die, but let's just get on with it, do it, do it properly, and then we can put it to bed and get on with life. Great, hope that helps. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you in next week's 5 Minute Friday.